All right. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody, to the Thursday morning fundamental classes with Kira Franklin. That is me. Um, for those of you just joining in, I pretty much teach basic art fundamentals that would be helpful for tattooable images, as well as improving your artistic skills on a daily basis with helpful exercises and all that fun stuff. Um, if you don't know me, my name is Kier Franklin. I am from Western Massachusetts and I am a first year tattooer. I uh, had my apprenticeship for about three years um, and I've been just tattooing on my own for a good year now. So uh, with that said, we're gonna kind of get started. Uh, for those of you who are just joining in, like I said, for the first time, we do join in as far as Zoom wise later on, but I do post it in the chat section on the Reinventing That Tattoo app comment section or um, chat section. So if you are trying to Zoom in or figure out a way to Zoom in, that would be the way to do it. You'd have to download the Reinventing the Tattoo app, which is free on any mobile device. And right in the events, you just hit watch show for my show and right on the bottom when the time is prompted, you can join in and zoom in and come hang out. Uh, let me get my procreate loaded here and we will get started. We had one submission from last week, which was a little bit of a challenging one uh, we've been working on alongside Ricardo Sturdivant and Godgerson for anatomy for the month of August. And um, oh my gosh, that'd be so helpful if I had my Apple pencil. <laughs> uh, while I get that little up, just bear with me for about two seconds. Let me just go grab my Apple pencil. Um, just hold on one second. Let me run. <laughs> Always forget something. All right. So let me get my screen shared here. But as I was saying, uh, we had one submission for anatomy for last week. And uh, I pretty much asked everybody to kind of sum up all that we've been learning for the month of August. Uh, we were delving into the skull, the head, mm -hmm. eyes, nose, and mouth. Um, so for our final, I had said that I wanted everybody to try and imagine or render the skull underneath a face. So look at a portrait with good lighting, good reference, which I talked about last week. Um, and flip this the right way. And draw a skull underneath it because that's the foundation of it all, really. So we had one submission here. The Instagram's on the top left hand corner. This is our good friend Ricardo. Uh, he popped on last week and he also does the Tuesday morning uh, drawing groups or drawing classes that he does where he's been breaking down anatomy. Uh, he's been doing hands a lot, doing figures, uh, really talking about overall pleasing shapes. And I like the reference photos that he's been using for his classes because they're more of in a dynamic pose. Uh, so it gives you a little challenge. So it's not just, you know, it's for <clears throat> basic fundamentals, I think, but at the same time, it kind of gets you in that headspace where, you know, hand, hands especially come in so many different shapes, sizes, and, you know, ligaments, there's five of them on each hand. So it, it can, it can do many different things. Um, so which is what makes them so difficult, but he really breaks it down nicely. So this is his sub submission here. And I think he did an absolutely amazing job. Uh, very well done. This is kind of exactly what I was going for or what the, your end goal should be for this exercise and to really implement the foundation that you're looking for within your image, which obviously underneath your face is a skull, which is what we're really trying to shoot for here. So with that said, if I could, you know, critique this a little bit or, you know, help them out in any way nitpick you know this is just my personal opinion this is just me as a third party perspective viewing in um 
If you want me to do this with any of our past classes, feel free to submit them in to the Reinventing the Tattoo app or on Instagram and just tag me at Frankie Says Things and I'll be happy to take it here and talk about it live and give you some pointers or any fun stuff like that. But for Ricardo himself, um, we're gonna kind of be off topic a little bit and just talk about color, but it'll all be revolving around our subject that we're talking about this month, which is value, okay? And I preach and preach and preach, if you do follow me, that you know you should be viewing color as value, as a fundamental step to understanding color, which is exactly what he has here. And he's very much trying to implement color to, in, to, do, you know, to establish his values, I should say. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this color point picker here and you have a very warm face, okay? The overall color or local color would be this red tone that's here because everything else is kind of like a reflected light that's coming off of it because all of this stuff from what you're telling me is in the shadow, okay? So this background here, I'm going to color pick it, is very cool. So very cool. And you also have very cool light happening right back here. It's a little bit warmer, but it's still in the cool range, okay? That's just telling me what, your, what color your light source is, okay? As a viewer, okay? This is me viewing it. So having such a cool background on top of your very warm face kind of conflicts with what I was kind of talking about and have been learning with temperature where your light source will manipulate any color that you have to kind of go towards it at being it being the light source rather than kind of going off and doing its own thing for it to naturally make sense. So, and you could say, well, I have some reflected light that's on, on the side here, okay? And that's reflection off of that light source. So wouldn't that make sense? Well, let me do something kind of, you know, interesting here. Let me, let me open up that color picker again. Let me select this reflected light that you have here, okay? See how warm it still is? Even though it's it's traveling to the cooler side of the yellows, it's still reading warm, okay? And even if I did it a little bit lower to this color that's down here, it's a little lighter, still it's, it's even warmer, okay? So the only real cool is this purple that's up here, and that's still like almost smack in the middle of the warm and cools of purple, okay? So how could you remedy this? You know, how could you think even further into this? Well, you know, simple thing could be, well, I could render the face again and just choose different colors, or you can, let's color pick that background again. You just turn it up, turn that hue up a little bit, make it a little more saturated and muted. And, the right hue and apply it down. Now instantly, what is happening to those colors on that face? It's an, it's, that's the coolest thing about colors because it instantly happens. You're seeing it lift off of it. It's, there's that separation right there, there it is. And that's all it takes. And you pretty much almost have it under here too. Like that's a cooler version, but it's, you know, very much less saturated and kind of is leaning towards the warmer sides. So you can get away with that. But that, that's it. Like, that's really all I have to say about this. Um, and, and I just hope that you can see exactly what it's doing as far, as far as taking that face and bringing it forward way more than having it without, okay? Hope that makes sense. <laughs>
But overall, it's a great composition. I loved how you put the eyes in there. I love the colors that you chose, um, purple and, and those very warm or cooler reds are very difficult to use um, because they're so saturated almost all the time. So it's hard to really you know, choose your proper values for those in Chroma, but you did a great job, a um, lot of improvement. I don't think, and I'm gonna make this statement, I don't think that you'd be as confident in color choosing now as you would before you started reinventing. Just throwing that out there. Very proud of you. Um, I did not put in the amount of hours that Ricardo did for this one, but I just wanted to put the point across as well, right? So I have the reference picture on the top left-hand side, and I just wanted to implement the light source and how you can replicate it onto the skull, even if you know, you're referencing it from a face. And that was my whole point with this. That's the my whole point with this exercise was your true introduction into value. Um, so obviously the light source is top left-hand side with some reflected light that's coming from the bottom right-hand side. And those rules and shapes still follow both with the skull and the face. And it still looks reputable, even though the proportions are off and it is unfinished, the values are there and they're still telling the story, which is what's gonna be leading us into the topic we're gonna be discussing today, <laughs> which is no tan. And usually I have like a, a warmer gray as a background for everybody to see a little bit better. But today we're going to be working with two tones and two tones only, because this was the only way that I could think of to introduce and get people familiar with the idea of value, which was just starting with two, not 10, which is, you know, the usual traditional uh, value scale. All right. So first we ask ourselves, what is no tan? No tan is the word you're gonna be hearing a lot today because that is the main subject of what we're talking about. Well, we can't talk about no tan without talking about value. So I have some very famous artists here, poets and photographers, some that you may recognize, some that you not, with very popular, an important value quote, William Morris Hunt. It's impossible to make a picture without values. Values are the basis. If they are not, tell me what is the basis, okay? Oscar Wilde, nowadays people know the price of everything and the value of nothing. John Singer Sargent, color is an inborn gift, but appreciation of value is merely training of the eye, which everyone ought to be able to acquire. Henry David Thoreau, there is no value in life except what you chose or choose to place upon it and no happiness in any place except what you bring to it yourself. God, powerful. <laughs> <laughs> so this is why I keep preaching and have been preaching for several chapters how important value is. And the discussion I had between the difference between shape and form, shape is your outer silhouette, outer line, outer composition, where the form is telling the story of light and direction and emotion. And even though value can really set the stones and be important, like William Morris Hunt said, the basis, it's probably the most Pop, or not popular, most important, fundamental. Because without value, everything's off. It, nothing makes sense as far as composition goes. But we're here to learn about the specifics of no tan. Okay. So no tan is very popular amongst Japanese artwork, especially in the early 1600s. This is a very popular image. Everybody knows this. It's the yin and yang, the positive and the negative, okay? Two-toned. It's a composition, 
you know what it says, you know what it reads, and it's two-toned. Or if you want to be spe specific, one tone of just being black. Okay. Go back to these quotes real quick. The John Singer Sar Sargent quote, color is an inborn gift, but appreciation of value, appreciation of value is merely training of the eye, which everyone ought to be able to acquire. That is my goal for this section that I'll be teaching. And if you're like, well, Kira, who are these people? These are just random people. Well, I mean, like, they're not random. <laughs> uh, these are some popular John Singer Sargent. And um, I'm so sorry. What is, what is the other guy? William Morris, my apology. Some very famous masterworks. And we'll be referencing back to these works throughout this section. So I want to give everybody the opportunity to really look at this and start to open your eyes to just the compositional value, the pleasing shapes, the light and dark, the yin and the yang. That's it. No midtones, no reflected lights, just lights, darks. That's it. So we have the definition here, no tan, design concept involving the play and placement of light and dark elements as they are placed next to each other in the composition of art and imagery. So no tan is essentially the idea that the elements of dark and light are equally important and need each other to exist. Okay, so you see this everywhere, not just in the specifics of you know, this no tan work, you see this in movies, every movie that exists, you have a good side and a bad side. Uh, photography, you have a lights and the dark side. You see this in comic books when there's just the line drawings, it's just all lights and darks, there's no in-betweens. And that is the importance of what I'm teaching today and the fundamentals of it, the positive and negative relationships, okay? Now, we're gonna discuss this piece of artwork and please do not come at me if I say this name wrong. Uh, Kano Sansetsu, okay? Japanese painter from 1589 to 1651. And he created this beautiful piece of artwork that's called Old Plum, okay? And believe it or not, this piece of artwork ranges to 16 feet tall spread upon these four sliding panels. It's where it sprouts, has little tiny sprout blossoms right in here to represent atmosphere of a cold spring morning symbolizing birth and renewal, which I think is pretty cool. <laughs> uh, you can find this in the Minneapolis Institute of Art, but what we're really focusing on is the overall compositional flow of light and dark. And I'm not just saying that the, uh, the outer shape or silhouette of it, but look into the tree here. Look at the clear light and dark strokes. And if you go out, you don't even see the half of it unless you really go in and study these movements. It's beautiful. It is the exact piece of work that we're looking for. And he honed into this specifically to show everybody the positive negative relationship of all compositional work. And he did a great job. <laughs> so if we go back to it, what we'll be focusing on mainly as an even more atom sized fundamental to this is just the positive negative relationship, okay? And I'm taking a second so you can view this as to the outer silhouette of this, okay? And this isn't exact, but this is just the shapes that you're going to be witnessing built on by value, okay? If I took the old plum image away, 
is this image still readable? The answer should be yes. Does this still look like a tree with like a little rock that's over on the left-hand side? Everything that this composition was meaning to read. And that answer should be yes. This is what you're trying to look for in all your compositions. This is what I was talking about many, you know, a couple chapters ago, a couple sections ago about the difference between shape and form. And what, what, if, what else is around besides that shape and form? It's just space. That's it. So it's just your compositional flow and then space. It's that simple. Now, we're going to switch gears a little bit and come over to the Western side here. And we're going to introduce ourselves to Arthur Wesley Dow. Okay. And truthfully, Arthur Wesley Dow um, brought Notan over to Western culture by writing his book, Composition, in 1899, which pretty much outlines what is said right on the cover, understanding line, no tan and color, okay? And if you're not too familiar with his work, here's a couple of images. And I hope you are seeing exactly what you should be seeing. The no tan way of life, the light and dark, that's it. Those pleasing shapes. Yes, there's mid-tone in there. Yes, there's some reflected light. Yes, there's temperature, hues, line, but take that all away for a second. Just think about those two tones, what is light and what is dark, that's it. And a rather interesting quote from that book is rather than copying nature, individuals should create art through elements of composition, line, mass, and living art which I think is very interesting. He also says, composition is the building up of harmony in the fundamental process in all of fine arts. Natural method, progressive order, first building up very simple harmonies, light and dark. That's where it all stems from, where those pleasing shapes are. <clears throat> but to bring this, really down, once again, to an atom-sized level. We think of it as this. And I had learned about this exercise, th exercise through Marshall Vandruff in his composition course that I had taken, 12-week course that he delves really into the no-tan way of thinking with your composition. And I'm not saying that you should be making your compositions like to this degree of two-toned, but this is how you should be thinking about the pleasing shapes and where they should be laying. Because if I had taken these away, yeah, certain elements are questionable, but they're still readable. Okay? That is the difference. That is what we're looking for, two-toned. So we're going to go back to the William Hunt's piece here, OK? And this was a very good example of no tan. Do you see what is happening here? And I could go a little more in depth into this and had done his eye on the right-hand side. I really could have, um, but for example purposes, I just wanted to show the silhouetted shape that is being made on his face and the lamb in the same shape here. That terminator edge, the absolute line that separates the light and dark. Okay. To make an overall composition that is readable, no matter what. 
Take away all fun stuff. What is left? Space and form. Extend, extend another olive branch here. Great John Singer Sargent piece. I hope you're starting to see it. Let's get this with the opacity all the way up. Do you see what I see? These are fundamentals. The masters are doing it. The masters are seeing it. The masters are implementing it. So don't tell me that fundamentals are, oh man, I don't want to do a sphere. I don't want to practice cubes. I don't want to practice no tan. It's so boring. Well, they do it too. <laughs> they know it exists. They have practiced it too. So that, that way, when they make their masterpieces like this, there's no question. It's exactly what Arthur Wesley Dow said as a regular progression by building harmonies. Ta-da. Let's, let's put it over it. Well, hot dog. I don't know, to me, that's still a composition. I don't know about you, but to me, I still know exactly what's going on. She's dancing. There's a party going, some guitars. I like it. Isn't that amazing? This is just the introduction to the value settings that we're going to be doing. It's the improvement that it's going to be made that's going to be worth it. Now, I know that was a very quick rundown. So what I have for everybody today and something that is gonna be more of an exercise than an assignment, okay? This is going to also be, which is what I'm going to be teaching you without even knowing it, how to study masterpieces, master's work, how to study them appropriately. This is a great way. John Singer Sargent's pieces are very, uh, you know, very well done and a great example is for practicing notan. In both of these pieces, you can clearly see the separation between light and dark. Top left-hand side, there is a clear Terminator line behind her going behind that bush thing there, past the river bend, and then back around to her completely outlining her silhouette. It's beautiful. Okay. So this is your assignment for this week. You are going to be taking pieces of master's work and pretty much doing the same thing that I did over the couple examples that we have, where we are going to be applying that two-toned effect to those master's work. Okay. So I'm going to release the Zoom link now. And I hope, I hope y'all will join me and we can discuss some no tan together. Just get this out. I'm sure some of you are wondering here, where is your Star Wars shirt? Well, it's now October. But here it's September, it's Halloween, relax. <laughs> so today we are wearing our Freddy Krueger shirt and will be for the duration until after Halloween. So let's get this in here for everybody. And you honestly, you could do the, do these literally like once a day, twice a day. They're so, uh, it's such a quick exercise, but yet very informative. And not gonna lie, once you start getting to those mid-tones and reflected lights, you're just not too sure how to place them, but we'll get into that. Really, because that was the trickiest thing with me when I went into my class with the Marshall Vantriff class and learned about it. Yeah. 
because all that uh, taught me was where to place my values. And that's where I really honed in on reflected light. That is still a dark. It's the lightest dark and darkest light, which I know. I hear you say this every day, I know, but not enough. <laughs> Right. And I'm releasing that Zoom link now. Sorry, guys, took me a second to get it in there. And good morning, everybody. Saying good morning. We'll come back here now and accept people in. So you just click the Zoom link and come on in. Uh, I'm going to do no tans. I'll probably do a handful because they are pretty quick, but yet I think I'll do it a little more carefully, like actually go in and do every detail that's in here, study it appropriately. Um, but these two compositions for a second, let's just look how beautiful this is. <laughs> it's so nice. <laughs> you know, great, the temperatures, that lavender on that shirt, what? <laughs> Next to that blue and yellow ochre, I can't with this guy. Anyway, I just had to fangirl for a second about color. Don't mind me. We got our good friend Ricardo in here with us. What up? What up, man? Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, I can't. Oh. <laughs> Technical difficulties. <laughs> My phone is drunk, I think. How's it going, man? How's it going, man? It's pretty good. That's awesome. And we got Makita, we got Makita in here. Makita in here. Hello, Hello everybody. Hi. 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 Hello. Oh gosh, we got a crowd here now. Uh, Hi. Hello. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, so I guess. Uh, so I guess. Ricardo, I have a question. Uh, I wasn't too hard on you, was it? I always get so nervous no. doing critiques. Why? Like, <laughs> That's what we're here for. <laughs> I know. I was like, no, this is somebody like, else's work. Somebody it's else's great. Work. <laughs> I can understand that. I can I can appreciate that. And thank you for the compliment. But like honestly, you know, um, one of the first things that I that I noticed with you here is that you have only been tattooing for a year and you're getting into it and stuff, but you offered me so many good. So much good insight that I would have never even thought of. You know what I mean? And it's always good to remember that. And I try to tell people that I've known that have been touching for a long time is don't disregard people that are just starting because they're having they're coming in with fresh eyes and like the importance of these basic forms and basic um, fundamentals like you're like you're talking about is it's crucial. You know what I mean? And I think you're right. We do forget the longer you go, the further away that starting point was. You know what I mean? So it's always good to go back to that starting point. But mm -hmm. thank you, and you're, and you're right. Like The way you talked about that color, it's interesting though, because I want to send you the color swatches that I used, because I did, I think the way the color picker works on the Procreate app, it's different than what was actually used, because uh, that grayish green color is actually in there. So it's really wild, but I did use like that really intense teal in the background instead of implement it in that background so that's it makes sense for you that's like i think that's exactly what you're saying though that that color was in there but i needed to reflect that <laughs> yeah and you so, have to remember that it, it live that mixes it live. in there no matter if you use it or not like the value yeah. could change but your saturation is still like lackluster so it'll still make a difference by the viewer which is weird mm -hmm. that's the tricky part about color truly um but it yeah. was it's just a simple like check of light source color that's really it and the whole thing just you know i hope it did i saw the comment and you said it did pop out more immediately yeah. which is what i was, it was hoping like, to do yeah, yeah it jumped right out at you it's incredible it's awesome um i couldn't believe it it's, it's like, like oh crap <laughs> <laughs> 
like night and day. I think what I'll do is, um, if you don't mind sharing that with me, uh, and I think I'll post it. I put it up on the reinvention of tattoo app, and then I'm gonna put it on Instagram too. So if you don't mind sharing it, maybe I can make a couple little comments about it, and I can post it on Instagram and and, and the reinvention app too. Yeah, man, I really appreciate yeah, that. Really Thanks. Appreciate yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, you know, and I can totally get where you're coming from being nervous and stuff like that, but don't be like, I was, I was really looking forward to hearing what you had to say about it. So thank you. Yeah, I'm glad that I took yeah, this Marco Bougie seminar that everybody should take everybody to take learn temperature because it's like, you know, completely have a difference of, you know, value being left and right to temperature and hues being up and down. So now that I have the yeah. ability to get the whole system down, it's so much easier. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, but did, uh, did everybody uh, learn stuff today learn with this no tan stuff? Excuse me. Sorry about that. Yeah, I'm excited to learn more. Coolio, Coolio. Um, uh, so I'm gonna screen share again real quick, uh, and I'm gonna get into this master study, which I don't do a lot of master studies, which I probably should do because I feel like they're very helpful. Because you pretty much, you know, you obsess over an artist. For example, John Singer Sargent, and every I feel like everybody goes through a John Singer Sargent's phase, but that's just me. Um, and you look at his works and you want to know how he did that, how he made those decisions. And what you do is you pretty much just replicate the same movements that he did. And it's not cheating or copying because you're not putting your own name on it. It's still John Singer Sargent. You're just learning exactly what he did in the master mindset. And that's the goal. You know, what? that's awesome that you say that because there's um, there's been a couple of times that I have gone I've taken trips to the to the museums and everything like that. And every once in a while, you'll see like an artist there with an easel and they're literally just painting those masterpieces. They're like sitting there live and they're trying to replicate that style. And it's, it's interesting to me that people go to that extent, but it makes sense to go straight to the source, right? And to be able to see the colors for what they really are in person. And yeah. um, without there being like a, you know, a video filter or like a photograph filter. Um, and it's pretty cool because I think that that reflects on what you're saying here, which is, you know, it's, it's okay to study those things. That way you can start implementing that influence on it, not, not that exact image. But even the colors, you could even still, you know, replicate your own images with the color selection and stuff like that too, which is okay. Mm -hmm. And make the relationships the same. Right, exactly. And um, if you want a challenge with this assignment that I did, like if you're really pretty advanced in this artistic realm, try and replicate these masterpieces, not from tracing over and procreate, but from just going off of those basic as pleasing shapes. And that could be a good challenge for yourself and how well you can see those pleasing shapes firsthand. And then I promise you next time you do your composition, that's all you're gonna be thinking about is where those pleasing shapes are gonna go. You know, one of the first things, I don't know if I can share this or not, or just show you, but one of the first things that I, uh, <laughs> one of the first people I thought of as far as artists go using this, like literally implementing the no 10 element to their artwork is uh, Frank Miller. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, a comic book, he's a comic book artist that draws this, this big character Batman quite a bit, you know, and I'm in love with Batman too. But um, yeah, his stuff is totally like just dark and white, you know? Positive and negative relationships and shapes that uh, give you that impression of what it is you're looking at as a human figure or face, or even cage yeah. and drapery. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like did you and... did you pull up some of his work? I do. I did. Hold on. Let me let me start showing. Let me, so you can share everybody. Let me spotlight you. Okay. There you go. All right. Hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> All right. So there you go. Oh yeah, perfect. Oh, yeah, perfect. You know, so it's, it's 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 dark on white or white on dark, and it's exactly what you're talking about. I think you know those simple shapes, the pleasing shapes that create this harmony, and the way that they're arranged next to each other help you realize what it is that the artist wants you to see. Yeah, that's exactly it, right there. That's it. Yeah, there's there's drapery, there's everything, the facial structures. And even down here, you can see this one, I think. Yeah. 
if I get a little bit closer, you can see how you even use the uh, same effect for the face, for a human face. Mm. So. Absolutely. Beautiful. Well done. Yeah, it's killer, right? I love him. I love his stuff. And that's a that's a pure that's fundamental a way of uh, way of, uh, studying that, studying and that's a great. Mm -hmm. Great. And what's it? What's his name again? Just so everybody can, including myself, can write it down. Frank Miller. Uh, he's actually, you know, he actually writes a lot of these comics. And they've like uh, David Goyer, which is a writer and producer, and um, Christopher Nolan. Chris Nolan, uh, the ones that did the uh, the most popular and most recent Batman movies. They used his. They were, those movies were heavily influenced by his his, uh, his graphic novels and his artwork and stuff like that too. So. He also did Hellboy, and he also did 300. <laughs> All right. All right. Not, well, you know what? With Hellboy, I can see that for sure. Uh, yeah, I can, I'm already picturing that for sure. That would be a good study yeah. as well. Comic books in general are great no-tan studies. Oh, yeah. Big time. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Good job. All right. Thanks. Uh, uh, Makita, did you choose anything yet as far as reference or horror? Any artists that you're thinking of at the moment? Um, um so I was kind of like busy with the baby. So um so I'm basically finding my own picture. Okay. And could you could you just like reiterate what exactly I'm supposed to be doing? <laughs> okay, so the so no tan is that yin yang of positive and negative straight up, right? So yes, you're trying, I trying. Yeah, so you're trying to find an image that you can use to study that separation between light and dark. Not so much midtones or anything like that, but just light and dark. And I'm using those John Singer Sargent paintings, but Ricardo's using that comic book artist. So there's many different artists out there that you can use. Um, if you want to use your own picture, for sure, go ahead. Um, you can use the other artists that we've mentioned throughout as well perfectly fine this is okay. just for your benefit all right all right give me a minute and i'll find something <laughs> for sure mm -hmm. so let me well i'll just i'm not going to use him i think what i'm going to do is just use like that style and uh take some actual photos of batman and or make my own let's make my own. you know what? i think i'm going to do a wolverine like that because i love wolverine all right so, go. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good but challenge the other for artist, yourself the other artists are definitely great, man. I uh, I appreciate all those works, especially Sargent. He's um he's an awesome painter, and I've heard a lot of people late more recently. You know what? Actually, there's a guy that Bill Murray was talking about, and there's this interview with Bill Murray. It's pretty cool, and um he <laughs> talks about the the first acting job that he ever had, and he did so terrible, right? He did so terrible that he said he walked off the set. He's just started walking he's in Chicago somewhere. And he's like, he ends up just going so far that he ends up on Michigan Avenue. He's like, well, I know that Michigan Avenue goes north and south, so I'll just go north. So he goes north and he said he ends up at the uh, Chicago Art Museum. This is all just by happen chance, by the way. And he walks in and he sees this painting and he just like gets captivated by it. He's like talking about ending his life and stuff, even, you know, like how bad he felt about it. And um, it's cool because I love Bill Murray too, but I love a lot of stuff. Tonight. Anyways, <laughs> Bill Murray <laughs> is sitting at this painting and he said, it's, what is it, the catcher? I can't remember here, let me see. I think I got a, a picture of it. Uh, yeah, this is it. I can't you said this name. is an interview that he did? Yeah, it's an interview that he did. And he said he saw this painting. That's beautiful. And um, yeah, I can't remember what it's, what he said it was called. He couldn't remember the name of it. I looked it up. Now I can't fucking remember the name of it. Either. But um, <laughs> it's okay. yeah, you know, he said it was so cool because he saw the sun coming up from behind her, and the way she was just standing still, paying attention to the environment that she's in, you know, and like how no matter what, that sun's gonna be there, right? So I thought that was a pretty cool story, and the the style of the renderings of Sergeant kind of reminded me of that too. I'm wondering if it was even done in the same time period. But um, anyway, yeah, yeah, pretty cool. So I'll look that I'll look that stuff up, and then I'll post yeah, it. That's, that's awesome. Uh, uh, did you find this interview on YouTube? Yeah, yeah, I found it on YouTube. That way we can. Yeah, I'll, I'll put the link in my uh, in my uh, on my reinventing 
I'm uh, pretty positive that you've sent that before, and I've seen it. Have I? I might have. Yeah, but if anyone wants to see, I think I did see it. It is a very well done interview. <laughs> yeah. So let me pretty see cool. Here. Go back. So I'm separating oh, these I'm values. Yeah, uh, so everybody can see immediately what's happening. Why it's important. Oh man, check it out. We're already separating values and look what it's doing already. Even those hard lines outside of the John Singer Sargent painting, um, you can still see why the separation of values and pleasing shapes is important. And that it's already carving a silhouette for her. But once you start doing this, now you're like, well, everything's dark. <laughs> you start to get confused on how you're separating your values. And what you're really focusing on is everything that is mid-tone and less and light. Mid-tone and darker is a dark. So I'm just doing it this way for the meanings of the class, but time does a lot. I will do a study. And I think I'm in my John Singer Sergeant phase now <clears throat> because I'm very much obsessed with him. <laughs> He's an amazing painter. And there's a lot of uh, more recent artists that are really into his work and you can see the reflection of it in their work yeah, too. Like the mindset that he has absolutely. Yeah, so we will carry this on for a little bit. But I really want to get these values separated, but I'm going to take my time a lot more with this than than the examples that I had. But yeah, it's starting up here where I am, it's starting to get colder and colder. And I'm so excited for it. <laughs> I don't like uh, don't snow like before that. Halloween, don't but Halloween. I'll accept it this year. It's been gross this summer. What? No, yeah. man. No, man. <laughs> no, man. No, no, no. <laughs> gotta, gotta have summer. Gotta have summer. Now you like the summer? You don't like the brisk, freezing cold? <laughs> I mean, you know, at first it's really cool, like the first time it snows. And then that's it. Like, okay, I'm done. <laughs> okay, <laughs> wait six sorry. more months of this crap. <laughs> that's, yeah. Yeah, I'm, but I'm excited for it. I'm too Irish for the warm. <laughs> <laughs> I was meant to thrive in the snow. I like, I see what you're doing there. And you know what? In a sense, too, here, you're almost creating like a tattoo stencil with this. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, doesn't it, don't, wouldn't you say? I mean, you're simplifying quite a bit, aren't you? Yeah. Wow, I, mean, yeah. I mean, that's the uh, wow. overall point of this uh, no tan introduction. The separating your values from just two tones. That's it. Yeah. What do you know? What do you, uh, you know? Just, <laughs> No, seriously, I mean, I just glanced up and I just saw that the simpler outline. I was like, yeah, that kind of looks like a stencil that you would make. You know, you're not trying to include every single little stroke. You're generalizing. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, That's when a Notan, great introduction to no when, Yeah, when Notan was taught to me, I was just like, oh, values are so much easier now. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that makes sense, doesn't it? You're like, you're showing how um, you can train your brain to see these shapes a little bit sooner. Yeah, I mean, well, if yeah, you I think mean, about it, think about the, the new age the portrait new black and gray, gray artists, artists mm -hmm. they really use really the no tan style. style. Mm -hmm. The heavy, heavy I amounts of black, of black and then light. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The smallest amount of mid tone and, and light. And light. 
Yeah, like skin tone, right? Yeah, and that's yeah. cool because then we talk about, then you get into the theory of longevity for the tattoo and stuff like that too. So that, that you know, helps support the idea of the long lasting tattoo for sure, which is no tan process. Yeah, which is my whole little point here. And I kind of have heard it from my guy, Alan Watts, that oh. the best teacher teaches his students without them even realizing it. And they kind of just start to build these uh, habits without even realizing that they're building good habits. Yeah. Because then it doesn't allow that resistance to come in and taint to that. Right. I like that. It's pretty cool. So that when, one day when they are able to wield whatever craft they want to wield, it's like riding a bike without training wheels for the first time. Mm -hmm. Which is a good way of viewing it. So hopefully, right, the introduction of this, everybody will start to understand the two-toned process and at the same time, limiting your values for future compositions. Because how many beginner artists have you seen that try to do portraits or any type of realism composition to copy from Google? And it's just a lot of mid-tones. 95% of the time. <laughs> yeah, I would say for sure, yeah, yeah. They're scared of that heavy dark. And yep, it's, yeah. it's the most important True. part. One's off, dude. I mean, what is, what is it saying? You either have too little or you, you want to have in the middle rather than too little or too much. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But just to help build that confidence and the idea that you can do it you can see it before you even start questioning oh my god is it enough oh crap <laughs> yeah and it's always that fear that too much black is not good <laughs> right right because you can't come back from it that's the scary part but when you got here when you got here here no fear <laughs> Mm -hmm. Right? That's, I'm here to guide here to everybody guide. to not make the mistakes that I've made. <laughs> now, our, earlier also, Kira, you mentioned that um, before I joined the, uh, the reinventing crew and the, the app, um, that my color selection was a lot more questionable for sure. I would definitely agree with that. Um, I, can't, I can't remember exactly what you said, but you mentioned something along those lines and I agree with you completely. Like, you know what I mean? I, I feel a little more confident in my color choices now. Like before somebody would tell me, oh, I want color in my tattoo. And I'd just start breathing real <laughs> deep and steady, not to panic in front of them. You know what I mean? <laughs> so. Yeah, no, it's, it's very much true. Um, you when you first started you were, you know you and I were on the same boat that we were just in love with muted tones mm -hmm. because I felt like to me personally I can't speak for you but I felt like mid-tones or muted tones were like the safe goat like the nice safety jacket that was like it's okay we're just muted it's okay <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> those exactly. bright saturated tones were scary because we were taught that it's not good to apply a lot of saturated tones but yeah. now that i've started talking about temperature it's mm -hmm. now it's like free game it's like oh i can use these super saturated tones and it could still work in this manner yeah which I think is amazing. It's super amazing. But truly, I just have to thank you for just allowing me to just babble about color. Because <laughs> yeah, that's what no. it is 95% of the time. <laughs> like when I learned Colors to started to learn about temperature stuff, I was like, I have to tell everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and it did you. you guys, you guys. <laughs> Like Willy Wonka in that scene when he's running home from <laughs> oh, yeah. the golden ticket. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, no doubt, dude. That's a good way to look at it. 
Yeah, that's awesome. So I appreciate that, but you're doing great. But, uh, I was glad that I was able to help you out. Yeah, absolutely. I tell all my clients about that too. I'm like, man, it's so awesome to be having to have uh, the, the education come from like the most unexpected place. You know what I mean? I don't mean that in a bad way. I think it's awesome here. Like it just proves the fact that like we should just open up a little bit more and be a little bit more, you know, uh, open interpretation and, 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 you know, subject ourselves to these ideas of these fearful things. Like I was so concerned and worried about subjecting myself to criticism of any sort, you know what I mean? For a long time. And then I did, and I've learned so much since then. And I met so many cool people because of it too. Absolutely. Very radical. Yeah, definitely I guess met some I, great people. Mm-hmm. And we got Philly soon too, so that'll be fun. Yeah, that's going to be killer. I can't wait. Oh, and I got my reinventing shirt too in the mail. So that's awesome. Yeah, so we're going to be repping it like the good little Mormons. Yeah. <laughs> Spreading the good gospel. Have you heard about the good gospel? <laughs> well, let me tell you about our, Let me tell you about RIT. Little pamphlets. Little pamphlets. No doubt, right? See, this is a real challenge. It really is, isn't it? It's, um, it's almost like you're taking a dimensional form and you're turning it back into that shape. For real, because now I and now that I'm starting to solidify all the no tan marks, I'm like, what I'm left with is just mid tones. So I'm just like, shit. Mm-hmm. I'm supposed to place all these. And, and this is a great puzzle exercise to get you used to uh, solidifying where to place your values. Oh, yeah, big time. I'm already recognizing that. I'm like, nope, that doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I'm like, crap. Got to rethink that one. Yeah, it's the best. So let me see here. Where am I going to place this? You definitely start seeing your highlights and stuff like that right away, don't you? Yeah. yeah. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that's that's um, one thing that I'm noticing right away is like I can already see the light source just from the outline, just from the simple outline of, of uh, marking out where your darks are. Yeah. That's and then you, you start to, you're, well, me personally, me personally, start to get a little weary because you're like, weary. okay, yeah. that yeah. highlight is the highlight quote unquote is lightest quote, light. 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 so that means mm-hmm. does that mean everything else is dark <laughs> right right <laughs> which isn't the case so it's a uh it's very very weird and very challenging for sure let me apply black and gold here come in where's my i hate my inappropriate when you have like the smallest gap and you're trying to fill in like a huge lighter, but you can't because there's a hole somewhere. You know what I mean? You know what? Would you? Yeah. Uh, actually, I saw you doing that. Would you mind kind of um refreshing me, or just introducing me to like what it is that you're how you're doing that? Uh, the whole process, yeah. or just the, the fill in part? part? Just the fill in part. Like you're just making sure that the outline connects, right? And then you're holding yeah, on just, to your yeah. colors. Yeah, I'm just holding onto this thing and just dragging it over and it'll fill the area. It's the circle that you're selecting your color from up in the top right hand corner. Okay. Just drag it around. Okay, let me see if I can do that real quick. Do it that way and I'll show you the other way that you can do it. Mine mine see mine keeps changing color whenever I do that. So you just touch on the circle and hold it? No, don't hold it. You just drag it right over it. Drag it right over it. Okay. Oh yeah. Look at that. What do you know? <laughs> yeah, All right. So then, so then it won't it won't do it unless everything's connected correctly, right? Yeah. If you have yeah. the smallest gap in between, then so yep. Uh, like I see this that. really silly line, but I'll show you this way too. So if you uh, press on the little squiggly S here thing and you go to automatic and you just make sure mm-hmm. the color that you have is what you want to change it to, and you just mm-hmm. tap the thing. Done. There you go. All right, all right. 
right? And you can do that with several that of them. Several of them. But, uh, hmm. Killer. Okay. But I'm just, uh, should uh, actually put that back here. So, so for the viewers that are watching, watching. keep going forward. Um, I undo this. Nope, this one. So it's kind of like so a rickety kind of mess. Like rickety mess. And, and there's a lot of black going on. Black going on. So, so this could be the reason be why, the reason why John Singer Sargent John Singer applied those applied brightly those lighter brightly tones lighter on the top tone here, top here to dis uh, distribute more lighter tone more values, lighter tone but, values but, still but still implementing a dark no dark tan effect. Tan effect. So instead of your so eyes of seeing like this black blob, blob above, above this poor lady, this poor lady, you'll have those lighter tones lighter as you build your composition. But I guarantee you he started out with something like this on his canvas or whatever. And then went in there and applied those lighter tones to the top in those nice brush strokey movements that he does. Um, so let me pause on that one for this one so I can show a couple examples. So this one's a little bit so easier little because, they have because they have white flowers, white flowers and like flowers. white dress. And I'm saying local color white, color white if we really wanted to get Pacific about this. There's like yellow ochres and lavenders all up in this. <laughs> yeah, look at that. It's gorgeous, too. Um, um, absolutely beautiful painting. Uh, the reflected light that's happening on each of their faces from lighting the lanterns, the compositional flow of the light and dark. Same way. Same way. Right? Same way that I had shown in the lady on the top left with the lighter tones that are happening on the top, even though that the simplistic shape is dark, the same thing is happening to the right hand painting. So we can start to see a pattern in his work, which is why master studies are a good thing. So now we're recognizing that it's a planned move to put these quote unquote white flowers on the top darker side of this canvas to distract your eye from how dark this image is. Like if he had gone in here, and let's just say like he made this whole thing like this green color without any of these flowers, anything like that. And we did a no tan study. It would just be two kids in the middle of this deep abyss canvas. Now that we have now those flowers, have flowers, there's accented there's elements around, around to, to extinguish that extinguish positive that negative, negative relationship. relationship. So if I were to do the same. And this could be a fun yeah, study a fun to do study with charcoal with as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually. It's interesting you say that because that's actually how I start a lot of my designs is just like that, like a very simple silhouette, silhouetted shapes, you know, very simple silhouetted shapes, and you just kind of go from there, and you start adding more and more introductions of um, tonal values, relationships, uh, in terms of the light source. Yeah. Once I started seeing that you would do your work like that, mm -hmm. is when I was like, oh, so you don't have to like outline the whole thing first. <laughs> right, right. I actually think I remember us having a conversation about something like that. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> why, why are you doing all that? <laughs> like, what do you mean? <laughs> 
Yeah, that's <laughs> no, it's fun. It's fun though, you know, because like you said, we learn so much from being around other artists and seeing their applications and the way. And it, it a lot of it is based off of how we see things, how we perceive them, you know. And a lot of these masters, that's what they were doing. They were creating this these fundamentals by you know replicating what it is that they saw in their own way. I think and anyway. It, it, that's a great point to make because it's you know to bring up Arthur Wesley Dow again. That's exactly what he did for Notan, where he took it from Eastern artists and uh, brought it to the Western culture. And was like, hey guys, mm -hmm. this is a great way of doing it. <laughs> right. And he he saw what they were trying to do and put out, so. <laughs> It became a, uh, a great way, and that's, that's why I always say to make friends with as many artists as possible. Mm -hmm. All kinds of different artists, too. Yeah, yeah, not just tattoo artists, right? <laughs> no, not just tattoo artists. And not only that, but if somebody asks you how you do something, it's always good to be able to sit down and try to explain it to them. You know what I mean? I remember for the longest time, even before we, right before we invented the tattoo, <laughs> I remember one of the first times that I hung out with Jason, yeah. uh, we went down to hyperspace. Was how do you do that? And I was like, uh, I don't know. And I remember one of the first Zoom calls we had. He was asking me how I did things, and I tried to explain it, and I had no idea how to do it. Yeah, it <laughs> but, helps you understand what you know already as a tool. Exactly. Exactly. Which is why I like teaching this course. That helps me understand what I already know. Like it helps build confidence. Yes, confidence for sure. <laughs> no, for real, seriously, man. I feel so much better about things sometimes. But just, just doing this, jumping on here with you, jumping on here with everybody else, jumping in on Monday nights with guys. So awesome. Yeah. Uh, Makita, did you find a uh, reference? Did you find a reference? Yes. Um, okay, let me, let, me, let me see it. I used a photo, a photo. that um, my friend took. He's a photographer. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So that's actually me in the middle. <laughs> oh, wow. So, yeah, I used that. Um, do you want me to show you what I did? Yeah. There you go. Yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. There you go. Do you see what's happening? Oh, that's yeah. amazing. <laughs> you got that nice perspective shot in it too. The shadow, like perfect. Absolutely perfect. This is exactly what we're looking for. Great job. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Round of applause for Makita. She did an amazing job. Woo you get a gold Good star. Job. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Awesome job. Uh, yes. Cardo, do you have anything yet? Not, not yet. Let me play around with this just a little bit more. And see All right. uh, are you tracing over or are you, you're making your own composition, correct, of Wolverine? No, I'm, I'm, I'm tracing over a Wolverine right now. So. Oh, okay. I think I might try to implement that into another. I'd like to get this to see what you think first, and then, and then maybe apply it to a, a different drawing later. I think right now we're just trying to learn about this. So that's another thing I'm figuring out. I like to try. I tend to like just jump in, you know, the deep end. Yeah. Like, how oh, so? Crap. Well, I mean, I'll just take a little bit of information and then just go for it, and I find myself. Um, I don't think it's a bad thing. I just find myself kind of fumbling through it and trying to apply my own way of doing it first rather than learning it, being able to apply it and then find out how I want to tweak a little bit later. Does that make sense? I think it'd be like one of the steps in my, my evolution that I'd like to have for myself too. That's so nice. Yeah. <laughs> An evolution? Wow. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Evolution That's amazing. Of my, for that just made me so happy. 
<laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Killer, man. Everybody's having an evolution. Having an evolution. You get an evolution. <laughs> you get an evolution. Everybody has an evolution. There you go. Exactly that. Awesome. And I will say that I think to, to go back to like the teaching thing, I always mm-hmm. thought it was so funny how you'd use, and I've told this story so many times, when you would use the word scumbling and then you learned that it was an actual term. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> it just makes sense. <laughs> Because like, I remember what are you doing? when you use that a lot, and you're like, I don't know why I use that word, but it's I just say scumble. I just it just sounds, you know, like it sounds right. And then <laughs> I remember sending you the definition book, and scumble was like right there. <laughs> it's like, hey man, <laughs> hey, what do you know? What do you know? Holy crap! And maybe you Holy wouldn't have been up. able to find that out if it weren't for you trying to explain these terms in your own way, you know? Right, exactly. And that's what I'm saying. I don't think there's anything bad about it at all. I just think that, um, you know, for learning, it might be good to stop, listen, apply. And then, um, you know, because there's like so many constructive critiques that I've had from Guy, from you, from Jason, from Bruno, from everybody else on the forum that like wants to contribute. Um, and I've actually done that and stopped and listened and then applied it and like, oh, okay, I get it now. Like, holy crap, it actually makes sense. What do you know? Holy crap, it actually makes sense. It's awesome. Yeah. 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 You start to learn new things and unlock new doors when you do it in that avenue. Exactly. You know, it's cool because we're... What? As I say, I'm sure if we asked Guy he, about his Monday classes, he would have felt the same way about learning new things by teaching us. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that was actually in his introduction video. It's pretty cool. He, no, I mean, he didn't, I don't think he said it specifically. I have to go back and watch it, but he did say he's learning a lot through this process, too, and it's, I agree completely. Like what we were talking about, like talking about what it is that you think you do know and learning more about it in the process, right? Yes, but uh, it's cool. Yeah. It's cool because we were just talking about using other art mediums and stuff like that to your to your uh, abilities. And uh, Makita busted out this uh, photograph that her and her friend took. It's awesome. Yeah, and it works yeah, perfectly. It works perfectly. Mm-hmm. That composition is still completely readable with what she did, yeah. and you know exactly what's going on with it. Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. Thanks for sharing it with us. So I'm going to cap off this one here. And I'm doing a little rushy through it, but that's all right. The idea will still be there. Man, I'm fighting the urge to blend so much. <laughs> Apply flat black. See here. Let's see, let's cap this off. All right, so once again, I outlined these values. To apply this black motion in here, and let's see what it does once we decide to. Be better with the big brush. 
Well, I'm glad that everybody was able to learn something with this whole thing. Um, Absolutely. And it was a little tough. I was, it, was little it took tough. me a couple of days to really figure out what to what the best introduction would be. Um, and I think the overall goal is just that you can trust your own brain a little more each time you do these classes. Yeah. Stop relying on reference so much because that's like, I feel like that's like the self-confidence bringer downer. <laughs> that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But I just feel like it, it's, you start to question yourself as an artist and what you know when you use reference so much. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Reference is a great thing. But when used in the amount you could be using it. Uh, sometimes it could bring you down as an artist. Am I the only one that felt this way? No, for sure. No, I agree. No, I agree. Yeah, I agree completely. You get kind of defeated, like you can't do it as well as what you're seeing. Yeah, exactly. I agree with that completely. Okay, I'm almost there. We'll see how well it translates because I haven't taken the image away yet, but we'll see. I have a hole somewhere. Oh, right here. making the color blue. Sometimes the fill color works and sometimes it really is just a pain in the ass. <laughs> I've noticed that, yeah. Like, no, I didn't select the entire screen. Stop doing that to me. <laughs> yeah, that's where the, the yeah, hole will come in. I'm sorry. Yes, if you have like a millimeter off of uh, unconnected line. It's like, oh, you mean this entire thing? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, you know what, pal? Just a whole black screen. Whole black That's what it is. <laughs> so I think what I would I like to I see like if anybody wants to turn in a critique is to see three of them and post the reference picture you went off of so that way okay. i can critique in a way because i don't want to critique and have you be like well that's part of the picture here jeez so i want it to at least be beneficial because i know everybody's busy you could be doing it every day you know but people got lives <laughs> What? What? <laughs> yeah, this is definitely challenging for sure. Oh, last night I had my, I don't know if you guys have seen it. I showed my roommate The Dark Crystal for the first time. Oh my God. Such a good movie. The original one? Yeah, of course, the original one, the 1982 okay, Jim Henson film. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty sure. Well, I know that there's a one a remake on Netflix I haven't seen yet, and I gotta check that out. The OG? No, I've seen the OG one a few times. Mm, yeah, <laughs> she's been doing that all morning. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I remember when I was a kid, those things freaked me the fuck out, dude. Did he really? <laughs> oh, yeah. Good time. Yeah. Well, I, I told her that my dad used to do that all the time to us, you know, as kids. He would just be like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Over everything. Over everything. Dad, everything. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Knock it out. You're being yeah. annoying. You're being annoying. <laughs> You're embarrassing me in front of all my friends. Yeah, all right, let's see here. Got a little bit of a mess going on, but 
overall, we got a readable image. Yeah, I think I got one. Right now. Oh, you want to share? Oh, you want to share? Yeah, hang on one second. Let me answer the uh, original because I think that's. Hang on one second. Mm -hmm. Oh, you got me on screen. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Okay, hang on. Hello. No pressure, no pressure. No pressure. I know, right? Tell me about it. Okay, so here is. Uh, do you want to see the. Here, do you want to see it underneath the image or do you want, how do you want me to show it to you? Uh, everything. So I want to see the reference picture, what you did. Okay. All right. So, um, let me minimize this guy real quick. All right. So, there's the reference photo. And there's this face, right. which I think I messed it up a little. I think I went a little too dark on the head. And I think the left side of his face should be, I guess it could be the right side of his face should be a little bit darker, more silhouetted. It looks confusing to me. I don't think I nailed it. I think I, I think got it kind the, of there. The only thing that I'm the saying that it needs is just that cast shadow, shadow behind, the left behind the left ear. OK. That's it. Okay. And maybe the shoulder or back of neck area mm -hmm. might be confusing. Yeah, I think that, that could be it too. But if I did the back area, then hmm, maybe, you know, let me get rid of this real quick. It's a challenge. I like that it's a challenge for everybody. It is. It's super challenging. It's hard to use only two colors. <laughs> oh, right? one color. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it is super challenging. Still make it a pleasing shape. <laughs> a little bit better. I just got rid of the neck for now. It's a little bit better, but I think it's still confusing. But anyways, I uh, I did that. I'm gonna work on this one for sure. I did that, but before that, I used the um. I made it into a black and white version too, which is crazy because you add a separate like little tones and it makes more sense, right? But still. Because that's um, what you're used to seeing is mid tones and reflected light. Mm -hmm. When you remove that, what are you left yeah, with, you sir? Left, sir? Some Black. crazy, confusing yeah. shit. <laughs> <laughs> More shapes. You, leave, you see shapes. Mm. Okay. Right. Perfect. That is a challenge for sure. Well, uh, that's amazing. Uh, yeah. Everybody did such a good job. Let me. My hair is absolutely wild today. Let me see. Let me spotlight myself all right uh that was amazing right. everybody that was amazing, everybody everybody did a great job great makita job. and ricardo makita amazing, job. amazing job gold stickers gold around, stickers around. <laughs> if i had them i could i would send them virtually <laughs> stickers <laughs> um so i guess just continue working on them and post them up uh for next week I will do the same, challenge yourself with this. It can be easy depending on certain compositions and pictures you use, but definitely challenge yourself with this. Get yourself wrapped around to the idea of this introduction to values because it's gonna get a little bit more progressive as we go. Tomorrow we're gonna, or not tomorrow, next week we're gonna add another tone. <laughs> so um, we're gonna be getting ourselves there. Uh, and for those of you watching, thank you so much for tuning in. You guys are the best. This is the Thursday Morning Fundamentals with Keir Franklin. That's me. Uh, you can find me on Reinventing the Tattoo at Frankie Tattoos Things and on Instagram at Frankie Says Things. Uh, do both of you want to say where we can find you at? We can start down the list. If, if you want to say something, Makita, go ahead. I know you got a little bean in your arm. <laughs> um, you can find me on Instagram at, um, I change my name all the time, but it is Tatu Habibi. So it's T-A-T-U period H-A-B-I-B-I. Perfect. And is that the same way? For, is it just Makita on reinventing? Yes. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much, Rikita. I know you got a crazy armful with you, but I appreciate you tuning in, really. Thank you. And Cardo, where can people find you? And you can tell them about your class that you do. 
Yeah, uh, you can find me on Instagram uh, at Candor Tattoo. Uh, you can find me on Reinventing the Tattoo as Ricardo Sertavant. Um, and I do Tuesday morning uh, a drawing session myself. I cover a bunch of different stuff. We were doing anatomy for the past month. I'll still be throwing some of that stuff in there because I love it. Um, and I like talking about it. And it's like showing the simple shapes that you can find in it to kind of help with portion uh, values and et cetera. Um, but it's every Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, tune in, check it out. And uh, unless otherwise told, I'll just be kind of doing some random stuff here and there. Uh, whatever kind of I pick up out of that stream of consciousness that's floating around everywhere. So, um, yeah, that's it. Thanks for having me, here. <clears throat> Thank you very much for joining. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me put myself back on. I'm still trying to get used to this. <laughs> uh, once again, thank you guys so much. Thank you, Reinventing the Tattoo. Uh, Sandy, Gabe, Guy, Lauren, and the Horseman. You guys are the best, inspiring me every day. Um, we'll see you guys next week for our next segment of Thursday Morning Fundamentals. Until then, thank you guys so much.